This Warrior dynasty, though, they got polished by 33 at home. They've lo- they've been blown out by Boston, Philly, mm-hmm. Toronto, Milwaukee, all four Eastern teams at home. Let's take me back to the MJ dynasty. Were they this bad during the regular season regularly? No, I mean, they got beat. I remember when I was in New Jersey in 97, we beat them in Jersey, okay? And then we went back to Chicago and they got us. But they had some games like that, but – it's a different time. You know, it, it's interesting because I did the game last yeah. night. And uh, we were meeting with Steve Kerr. And leading up to it, he said the challenge for him is trying to figure out how to get his, how to motivate his guys on different levels. Because human nature sets in. Of course. And with the grind of the last five years, okay, how do you motivate a team that's kind of already been there? At first, the first two years, it was just, we're fun, we, we're going at it, we got something to prove. And then it switched to being more of a burden during the regular season. And that's what we saw last night. A Boston team trying to figure it out. We're on the road. Can we bond together? This road trip is huge for us to kind of bond together where it was a Golden State team that came out flat and see kind of looked like, here we go. Body, body language. By the way, we'll show some video here. The body language for Golden State. Yeah, no. I mean, just not getting back. You know, I, I want to talk about the Kyrie situation mm-hmm. because we were, Joy and I were talking about this earlier, is that uh, I wrote both my books on a plane because I found that, that, that I tend to be kind of ADD mm-hmm. and I can't pay attention to stuff. But when I was on a plane for six hours, I, wow, yeah. I could dive deep. And Kyrie mentioned last night that the flight was so long that Danny and Brad called him up. Go back go back to the bad times in your career yeah. and the flights. And how do you turn the chemistry around? Well, it depends on the team, too, and the makeup of the team. I think that's so important. Because you got to keep in mind, a lot like the Lakers, the young players, okay, there's a lot of commonality there. Because you had high expectations based off what happened last year. Kuzma, Ingram... Ball, Lonzo, yeah. okay, you think about, okay, now they're going to take the next step. You think about Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Rozier, after that great, great next step. Now you bring back Kyrie, you bring back LeBron. Oh, instantly we're going to get better. But what happens is you have these young guys that got expectations upon themselves on what they, who they want to be, and they're young. Kyrie hasn't had to deal with that in regards to being a leader. LeBron hasn't had to deal with that in regards to being a leader because he's had an older team put around him. So I'm, I'm sure on that flight, and they talked about this Boston after the Houston loss, but what they needed to do. Everybody's talking about toxic environment, this, this, and this. And, and we expect it just to all happen because, oh, they're, but they're young kids and Kyrie really hasn't led. So that flight probably gave them time to kind of talk a little bit more, to be in close comfort, to have some things out, to figure it out a little bit. And the difference last night was from the beginning of the game, they were connected. Oh, the bench, even the bench. Oh, the, they were cheering on everything. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, I watched the first half. They were so engaged. Oh, it was unbelievable to watch. And it was even better to watch them continue to go to Gordon Hayward. Yeah. See, listen. Colin, I've been in that situation to understand what Gordon Hayward is going to. My third year when I got hurt, 51 games, I'm averaging 26. The next year I come back, I'm not the same player, okay? Gordon Hayward didn't play as many games with that crew as I did with Dallas, but trying to integrate him back into the system caused a little problem. Trying to integrate me back in the system caused a little division because I wasn't the same player. And I can understand um, Brad's dilemma, the player's dilemma, and Gordon's dilemma, you know? And to see him play like, like that last night, would he get 30 every night? No. But to watch his teammates support him, when he was open, they made sure he got it. They were cheering on the sideline. That was a beautiful that, – that was one of those moments where you can see, okay, now where can this Boston team carry that attitude? Forget win or loss. 
it's how they played the game to me that was more important. Yeah, and they, and they, and they do have playoff experience, a great coach, and they got about seven, eight guys that can play. Al Horford, Gordon, Kyrie, Jason Tatum, right. Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart. Yeah, and, and the other kid, the, the Mo- four, Morris. Uh, Morris. Yep. About seven dudes that can play in this league, some B minus, some A minus, mm-hmm. but I, I still like them. I've said my championship bubble is Golden State's the only team in the bubble. Houston, Boston, Philly, I think, are really talented. Milwaukee is close. Right. Let's go to LeBron. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I said this. I said about after that last season, I said it, and I readdressed it today. You could make an argument that LeBron would have been better off moving to L.A. L.A. is big. It engulfs you. Mm-hmm. If he just said, listen, man, I just got out of a bad marriage in Cleveland. I'm going to take a year off. It's not tampering when you're retired. Comes to L.A. It's like, you know what? I want to do some movies. want to do some stuff. I want to two chains. I want to do my stuff. Right. When I moved to L.A., I, I was at the beach for six weeks. Mm-hmm. I dyed my hair. Mm-hmm. I was a mess. Okay. <laughs> L.A. L.A. does that to it you. It does. That LeBron may have been better served after eight straight trip to the finals, looking at it and saying, "We this is this. You know what? I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to get off the treadmill. I'm going to survey all this stuff. I'm going to tamper, although it's not tampering. I'm going to get on my private jet. I'm going to go to Warrior Games. I'm going to take Clay and Kevin Durant out." Is I look at this year and I think, of course it didn't work. You can't get remarried 15 minutes into LA. He should. This, there's no way this emotionally was mm-hmm. gonna work. Well, well, here's the challenge too for a guy like LeBron because he's so competitive in what he wants to do. But because he's older in his career, and you understand that he's crossed over. You talk about the mogul stage to doing other things. To me, just outside looking in and what this team needed. Maybe you don't do all the Hollywood stuff. Maybe it's just basketball this year because that young team needed his full attention to understand what it means to win. And they didn't get it. And they didn't get it. And it's no fault of his own from this perspective because in his mind, he's still doing what LeBron does all the time. Everybody else just follows. But again, I'm going to go back to the youth aspect of it. When you got people saying – Okay, we need you to step up. You're next in line. Kyle, Kyle Kuzma, he's a surprise at the NBA. You know, what the Lakers were able to get. And Ingram, you need to play better. All this stuff is going on, okay? Yeah, we want to win, but I need to get my numbers too. I need to get better. I need to prove as a young player that I can compete in this league. And, and, the, prop, and the issue we have is that we want an 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old to automatically be 25, okay, overnight. It doesn't happen. They got to go through a process. And the process could have been helped a little bit more by LeBron of that laser focus. Okay? And I hate to compare Kobe and LeBron, but imagine if Kobe was in a situation. It's all basketball. And that's what those young players would see. By the way, I never felt Kobe in all his years in L.A. I never felt he was distracted. I felt Shaq was often distracted. Yeah. Shaq, Shaq was into the Hollywood thing. And, and, again, different personalities, different upbringing. Think about when Kobe was going through the whole trial. He had some of his best games because he was laser-focused, okay? When I was there briefly with the Lakers, I got a chance to see it, okay, firsthand. Just Kobe just being all about basketball. And that makes other guys that want to play and want to contribute – Hey, you know what, <laughs> you know, maybe tonight or maybe I, I got to really zone in because that guy up front, employee number tw- number eight at the time, um, is zoned in. And I got to do my job. And, and sometimes it takes that subtle change in the personality, as big as LeBron is, to say, you know, I'm just going to focus here. Uh, by the way, um, one question about Jordan. Uh, LeBron will surpass Jordan tonight mm-hmm. in points. Um. I said, listen, I, I spent a lot of time saying LeBron's the Swiss Army knife of the NBA. Mm-hmm. He's, he does more things well than Michael. But I will tell you, I was at Michael's last game in Portland. Mm-hmm. We have video. He was 40. He went 11 of 19, 25 points, 7 assists. I was at that game about third row to the left. Right. I do not believe LeBron's 34, that in six years, LeBron will ever play an NBA game and easily be the best player on the floor. And by the way, Rashid was on the floor. Bonzi on the mm-hmm. floor. I think Rip Hamilton was on the floor. Damon Stoudemire was on the floor. Zach Randolph was on the floor. I was at that game. Portland was a 50-win team. Michael at 40 was unbelievable. Um, go to your last time playing Jordan. How mm-hmm. old was he? Washington. When I played him in Washington. So, But here's the difference. His game was so dimensional from this perspective. 
Okay? If he, wasn't, if he didn't shoot the three well, guess what? I can go to the mid post. I can go to the post. I can go to the mid range. All the stuff that we're seeing right here are baskets that are in 15 feet, 18 feet, the post. All of those things are hard to stop. He can still get those shots. LeBron is built more, I'm going to take a long jump shot or I'm getting to the basket. Yeah. And then he's not shooting free throws well. So as you get older, it's easier to guard you. Okay? Because I can take that away. With this right here, this is a skill set that he developed over years. So when he got 40, this was second nature. LeBron doesn't have that tool in his toolbox to kind of go to mid-post, post, to be able to still be effective. Would he still be great? Eh, he probably will be. We don't know. But, but six that game right there. Transcends. Transcends. I don't care. That transcends. I, that game had Rip Hamilton, Zach Randolph, mm-hmm. Damon, Bonzi, Sheed, and I sat there with a buddy of mine, and I'm like, he is the best player on the floor. It's unbelievable. And, and 40. He, he 40 years old, but he did it because he was so efficient at understanding where the sweet spots in the defense were and where he could get his shots, okay? That's the beauty of it. And as great as LeBron is, that one year in, in Miami when he really went to the polls, he was right hand, left hand, could, couldn't stop him. I said, see, that's that next step. But he kind of went away from it because yeah. he's more comfortable playing outside. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, uh, Jim Jackson, 14 NBA seasons. Congratulations <laughs> on all your personal stuff as well. Thank you. It's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.